Okay, Boomer. I have a morning cup of tea. I hang out in the sunny room with a cat. That's what being a, a advanced technology and civilization is all about. I don't gotta go out and kill anybody. I don't have to kill any animals. I got everything I need. And I just get to chill. How long is that gonna last? Now the coronavirus here, everyone is panic buying, the stores are empty. Uh, well, there's still electricity and uh, there's still gasoline. I'm gonna go get some propane for the barbecue later this afternoon. The cat was getting the video. He's a little sick. I gotta take him to the vet next week. I mean, he's on medicine. Let's hope the medicine clears it up. Hurricane Sandy, that was in, uh, how long ago was that? Eight years ago? Seven years ago? Uh, I didn't have any electricity for seven days. And it was in November. And it wasn't particularly warm, but it wasn't particularly cold either. Uh, I had to run out and get one of those uh, propane-fired uh, cabinet heaters. Of course, I was home. I was able to run the, the, uh, the fireplace, too. I had to drive... Uh, oh, I live in the great state of New Jersey, but I'm right next to New York State. And I had to drive like 10 miles away. 10 miles away, they had power and everything was normal. But I had to pay like a gallon of gas, it was like uh, $3.79 a gallon. At least I was able to get gas. Um, but then uh, after seven days, everything went back to normal. Uh, I had to use my camper stove to boil water and stuff like that. I couldn't shower. Uh, I went to uh, the town, had an old school that converted into an emergency center. And I took a shower there once. Uh, this two fat couple were in there before me. I guess they must have been doing the nasty in there. And the lady walked by three times and goes, they're still in here? She, they had to bang on the door to get them out. <laughs> so, uh, since I have a whole electric house, I couldn't pump water for my well. Uh, the refrigerator was off. Uh, everything was off. I, I heard, kept hearing this whirring noise when I stepped outside. So I walked around the block and everyone had these portable generators. So uh, after Hurricane Sandy, when it got a portable generator, I had to use it twice, sitting in a garage. But I use my solar panels almost every weekend. I got some solar panels, I put in my utility car, some batteries, charge controller, DC-AC converter, and I use that all the time. It's absolutely noiseless. The car's on wheels, I wheel that in a garage, I'm pointing at the sun, putting an extension cord, and it's silent. Doesn't need any more inputs. Once I put the thing together, that was it. Uh, gas generator, you always got to put gas in it, you got to put oil in it, you got to adjust things because it's all mechanical. But of course, it puts out more juice to the solar panels. The solar panels can only put out a thousand watts. And then it takes like a, a 12 hours to charge the battery up. Whereas uh, a gas generator puts out like 3,500 watts continuously as long as the, there's gas in the thing and it's running. However, uh, I can't must place to tell my cough tea. Um, the solar generators have pure sine wave output for AC, just like you get at a plug in your wall from the, the utility company, up to a thousand watts. But uh, the generator puts out a, a square wave. That's why instead of a 60 cycle uh, wave like this, puts out a square wave, goes up, comes down, up, like that. And it's pretty bad for electronics and motors. Uh, so they, they both have their advantages and their disadvantages. Uh, the generator was just cheap. Uh, it was like 300 bucks, I think. But to, to make a solo car, well, uh, I bought the panels a long time ago. I think they were uh, 300 bucks each or something crazy like that. The charge controller was cheap. 
Oh, batteries are expensive. These eight GM uh, deep cycle batteries, uh, they're like 300 bucks a pop or something. Uh, the inverters, their electronics are relatively inexpensive. Uh, but uh, I used the solar carts more. In fact, uh, I just got done brewing my coffee. They're outside sitting in the sun, uh, collecting photons and turning it in, into electrons. And uh, I don't have to put any more input into it. I don't have to, oh no, I'm out of gas. I gotta get gas. Where am I gonna get gas? So I gotta uh, hope that uh, my neighbors don't wanna kill me to get my solar carts. You know, when the apocalypse comes. Uh, I like to watch Japanese anime. One of my favorites is Fist of the North Star. Da, 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 da. There's this main character, Ken. Whenever he uh, punches people, uh, he makes this funny noise. It's post-apocalyptic. They had an atomic war. A lot of, most of the population got killed. A lot of Earth was turned to a wasteland. And all these people with superhuman powers uh, lorded it over North men. But you look at all these disaster movies or uh, superhero movies where the world gets destroyed on a regular basis. So everyone has a death wish. Why do people flock to these movies to watch the world get destroyed uh, and, and you know, people get killed left and right? Of course they all go there and say, oh yeah, uh, they're all going to die but not me. But how can that be? And so since 99.9% uh, .9 of the people die and only 0.1% are left, <laughs> the odds are you're going to be one of the dead. So, you know, my, oh, uh, one of my favorite movies was uh, 10,000 Years to Earth or something like that. It's a British movie. Uh, where they were digging a subway tunnel and they found a spaceship uh, buried in London somewhere. So uh, one of the cables that they were using to light it up hit the thing and energized it. And then uh, people started having weird visions. And it, what it said is that these uh, alien uh, crickets came from Mars or someplace. And uh, the apes that were here, that they uh, adjusted their DNA. Where have you heard that before? At any rate, uh, all modern humans were descended from the, these creatures that uh, uh, the crickets uh, genetically modified, and they still had this uh, uh, ESP power. So uh, as the ship was uh, becoming more energized, people were turning into the, these slaves. And if you weren't part of the collective, they, they would use their mind power and they would just kill you. And, uh, you know, civilization, civilization has a thin veneer. You know, if there's no toilet paper, you know, there's no Cheetos, people are going to freak out. If they think you have toilet paper, they think you have Cheetos, they're going to come and get you. That's just the way it is, America. Of course, they're talking about the FEMA camps now. Are they going to round everyone up and put us in a FEMA camp? I don't know. Is there a FEMA camp in New Jersey? Oh, there's Fort Monmouth. It's in South Jersey. It's an old uh, army base, military base, but they're turning it into luxury housing. So I guess that's not going to be a FEMA camp. Uh, they said they have uh, they they, uh, they stockpiled millions of uh, plastic coffins. I said, why? Every other country's just uh, uh, cremating the people, or, or uh, they're digging a big trench and just throwing you in. Why do we have to bury everyone in plastic? <laughs> Tea tastes better when it's brewed with solar power. When you know uh, you didn't have to pay uh, the electric company 10 cents to make your tea. But who knows what's going to happen next? I don't know what's going to happen next, but I'll keep you posted. And then I'll upload it uh, as long as the internet is up. Uh, yeah, once the internet is down, then you know the shit really hit the fan. And uh, as long as you're paying your taxes, things can't be that bad. You know, when you stop paying your taxes because there's no one here to collect the money, money's no good, whoa, then the shit hit the fan. New Jersey's like a gun when gun free states. It's almost impossible to get a permit for a gun. But there's so many illegal handguns around in all the uh, dystopian uh, urban areas like Patterson and Camden and Newark where people pop caps in you all the time because 
you didn't wear the right color shirt or something. And who's to say that the, these hordes uh, are, are going to come to my neighborhood and kill me for my stuff, my food? Now that's another thing in Fist of the North Star is uh, 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 the bad guys would just, they won't kill you for money or jewelry or your possessions. Uh, they kill you for food and water. That's the most important thing, food and water. They just kill you. The whole, whole community is just. And it was violent. It was one of these ultra violent Japanese uh, graphic uh, animes where their blood and guts and their brains exploding and people's arms and legs getting chopped off. But it was all in good fun. It was very interesting. I highly recommend you check it out. Fist of the North Star.